Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is so good to have you here. In this episode, we are gonna be talking about making your queries safer. Now, why would you wanna worry about the safety of your queries? Well, by default, a query that is invalid is simply ignored by ServiceNow. Ignored is not the same as returning zero results. If you wanna see how terrible the consequences can be of that, I did two videos just recently, one on .get and one on .add encoded query in the Glide record class. In these videos, you can see how disastrous things get. Today, I'm going to show you a sys property that you can put on your system that will avoid any disasters of an invalid query. First up, let's see what the stakes are. Here I have a script and the first thing I'm gonna do is call a variable called raw inc count. All it's gonna do is query the incident table with no criteria and return us the row count. Then we're gonna create a variable called inc fail query, and this is deliberately going to add an encoded query that is invalid. Then we are going to return the row count of that. And then if the row count of our invalid query is greater than zero, we know that we've made a huge mistake and disasters could be happening. So let's run that script. And we see the total incident count is 7,191, exactly what we expect. We see the total incident count of our failed query as 7,191. That is greater than zero. So that means we definitively could have done something very bad. Okay, so what do we do about it? Docs references this system property called glide.invalidQuery.returnNoRows. Now in my system, this system property did not exist by default, so I had to create it manually. And as you can see, its value is false. Now let's go ahead and change this value to true. And what we expect it to do based off the name is to return zero in cases of an invalid query. That would be no rows return. Here we are back on the same script that we executed at the start of this episode. And what we should expect is that the invalid query returns nothing, not 7,191, nothing. Let's run the script. And now we have total count is zero. We also noticed that we did not trip the logic of if the incident fail query get row count is greater than zero. So what we've done is stopped the system from doing any of that disastrous selecting more than we ever intended. Okay, I wanna cover something that I think is a really good practice. In my last two videos where I showcased the disasters that could happen if your queries are invalid, I had a few responses that said, why don't I just use this sys property that I just showed you and prevent that from ever happening. They use that as an instead of testing the query. But I implore you, please still test your queries. The reason for this is that you build your queries for a reason. Would you prefer that the query return zero whether or not there is a mistake? Or would you prefer that the query returns a zero and tells you that there has been a mistake made? I prefer the latter. Otherwise, I have the same problem in the opposite direction. Instead of false positives, I'm getting false negatives. So if we do have invalid queries, you should take the opportunity to test for them and send feedback back to the admin that tells them that there's a problem with the query. So here's a quick script that I made that has a query string that contains an invalid query. It's going through a glide record on the incident table. We are declaring a variable called valid query check and we're using the is valid encoded query that I did in this past video coming up in the corner. Then we're checking to see if that valid query check is true. Then we're executing the query. Then we're running through an if statement to see if any of the rows returned. Okay, and if it does return rows, it tells you how many rows it returns. And if it doesn't return rows, it tells you that there's possibly an invalid query string and we should do something to surface that information up to the admin. Let's give it a run. So it tells us that the invalid query string is act fifth equals true. That's a typo, so the query string's invalid. And it tells us that we should surface some kind of error to an admin, which I entirely agree with. Which do you prefer? Do you prefer just a zero return or do you prefer the zero return with the opportunity to tell the admins that something is wrong with this, with this query? And there you have it, folks. A real quick way to be used in addition to your testing of queries to make sure that no disasters are happening on your instance. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. If you're a ServiceNow expert looking for better opportunities, but maybe your resume or LinkedIn profile isn't doing you justice, reach out to me via LinkedIn or the email pictured here as I offer both career coaching and recruitment services. And if you're a ServiceNow customer or partner, you heard that right. Robert Fedoric now does ServiceNow recruiting. 
With a 1,500 subscriber YouTube channel and mailing list, and thousands of LinkedIn followers, let's make sure your open positions get first go at the prodigious pool of ServiceNow resources. Reach out via the emailed picture here.